Okay, so let's talk about hypertension, specifically the classification of blood pressures. And hypertension meaning simply high blood pressure. And we determine that by knowing what the normal or optimal blood pressure is. The optimal blood pressure is going to be less than 120 over 80. That's how we would uh, say it. And the top number is the systolic. That's basically measuring how high the blood pressure is when the heart beats. The bottom number in that is diastolic. That's the bottom number. Basically, how much pressure is being exerted on the blood vessels when the heart is not beating. So our optimal level is one, we want it to be less than 120 on the top, less than 80 on the bottom. So that blood pressure would read 120 over 80. In particular, let's look at when the hypertension begins. Hypertension, we have three, three stages here. The first stage is when your systolic, the top number, is greater than 140. That's when we know that we are developing hypertension and it's st we still have time to take action, but if we don't take action, we are rapidly slipping into dangerous territory. The bottom number, your diastolic, if it is greater than 90, this is important as well. So, stage one, this is when we really need to be on high alert. When that blood pressure is 140 over 90, then we're in stage one of hypertension and it only progresses as the blood pressure goes even higher. And as you would guess, as it gets higher, it gets more and more difficult to manage and you are rapidly approaching some of the dangerous um, clinical situations that I've been talking about. So let's actually look at some of those conditions. All right, so we have hypertension here, and uh, and it's they're a silent killer. Hypertension is a silent killer because, as I said, it can go undetected unless you are having your blood pressure checked. Most of the times, you really won't even notice the signs and symptoms that are taking place. But if you let these go unnoticed, you are in danger of having a stroke, or a CVA, as it is called, a cerebral vascular accident basically you can have a blood vessel in your brain burst or you could develop a clot in a blood vessel or you could have a heart attack or a myocardial infarction and another disease that is very prevalent but not that well known to the general public is renal failure renal failure is a result of number one high high blood pressure that goes unchecked or un, unmanaged for years or diabetes diabetes and hypertension are the number one and number two causes of renal failure and renal failure is on the rise because obesity and diabetes are also on the rise and those like I just said are the number one and the number two causes of renal failure Renal failure is a dreaded disease and the, the treatment is actually dialysis and you end up going to a clinic for the rest of your life being hooked up to a machine that has to filter your blood uh, for three to four hours per treatment. So you end up spending a good portion of your life going to a clinic to be hooked up to this machine. So those are just some overviews. But again, the key point here is that these are silent killers if it's going on on a cellular level and these things are taking place without any major signs or symptoms and by the time you actually realize it it's almost too late to really do anything so the key is prevention the last component of metabolic syndrome is inflammation inflammation produces various chemicals in the body that physicians measure. One of the most highly uh, observed chemicals is 
C-reactive protein or CRP. When the CRP level is greater than three, this indicates to a physician that the patient is in high risk for developing cardiovascular disease. So this actually completes the sixth component of the metabolic syndrome. What I like to do at this time is actually go back and review the six components. Six components being high glucose, insulin resistance, abdominal obesity or visceral obesity, hypertension, dyslipidemia, and inflammation. As I said before, these are a cluster of conditions when left unchecked will end up in some devastating uh, clinical conditions, being cardiovascular disease, uh, stroke, renal problems. So what is the cause and what are the treatments for metabolic syndrome? Hippocrates couldn't have said it better. Our food is our medicine and our medicine is our food. The cause of metabolic syndrome is our lifestyles. And the good news is the best treatment for metabolic syndrome is our lifestyle. Positive lifestyle changes, including increased exercise, decreased amounts of fat, increase fresh fruits and vegetables and there are many um, supplements that one can take the list is almost endless but if you have to choose one I recommend omega-3 fatty acids or fish oils fish oils actually have multiple effects including improving insulin sensitivity reducing serum glucose Insulin secretion increases, triglyceride decreases, HDL increases, erectile dysfunction improvement, and a decrease in blood pressures. So for all those multiple effects, one supplement, if you have to choose, you would want to include omega-3 fatty acids into your diets. So, I hope you have gotten some valuable information from this presentation. If you like the content, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to my next video series on how to naturally boost your immune system.